we're talking about in the red China. China's capitalist communist cocktail has led to an odd problem. A bunch of government owned companies whose primary source of income is loans from the government itself. Our exciting new product for 2021 is borrowing a million dollars from the federales. Factoring in product costs and marketing, well that should net us a cool million dollars. How are we going to pay it back in 10 years? Well, try out this exciting new product for size. Borrowing a million and ten dollars from the government in ten years. Now, this system of financial support for state owned companies has led to a rise in zombie firms, or unprofitable firms who would fail if not for government support. Now, let me clarify something before I keep talking about it. This isn't like the United States and the USPS, where public ownership has a tangible benefit to the people. It's a bit more like if America was paying to keep all the blockbuster videos open so they could compete with privately owned Netflix. So why am I talking about any of this today? Well, the Chinese government is facing either a massive problem or a massive opportunity depending on which side of the platform you ask. Now, in the next 12 months, $1.3 trillion of Chinese corporate bonds are set to expire, and a bunch of hands are about to be extended towards President Xi. Money, please? The question facing the administration is, do we grab our sawed off shotgun and start killing off some zombie corporations, or should we feed them for a bit longer? Are we reducing moral hazard by allowing more defaults or turning the domestic bond market into a more reliable source of long term funding? These dueling goals are currently fighting it out at the People's Bank of China or the Chinese Federal Reserve. The People's Bank is leaning towards the trimming the fat side of the argument right now. Don't go poking around their neck of the woods if you want a bailout. Now, overall, in just a surprisingly capitalist twist, Beijing has sought to establish a more market led approach to risk that allows competition to weed out weaker borrowers and so called zombie firms. Yep, if you want to sell bonds in China but can't find investors, you're going to have to do it the way we do it in the free markets turn your logo into a Shiba and hit up Robinhood. Initial numbers from this new policy approach are in, and they're drastic. While defaults were once considered a rare occurrence in China's bond market, with many borrowers having relied on financial support or a bailout in times of trouble, the past three years have combined seen record numbers of delinquencies. Now, there are a few different motivations for this complete policy pivot. Now, first, for a long time, there was just this weird limitation of investment for innovative companies. If you or I, as a private investor, could either pick a state-owned blockbuster that was implicitly backed by the government, or some guy's streaming service that could fail at any moment, yeah, I'm gonna go with tradition. Now, there are great innovations going on in China right now, but most of the funding has had to be tied directly to government investment and ownership. China's goal here is to steer some of that local investment towards putting money into the next big thing. Similarly, well, it's just kind of an expensive waste of time to keep all these unprofitable firms that don't provide helpful societal services alive. Now, of course, as is always true with proposed policy, for every action there's an equal and opposite reaction. If your goal is to weed out underperformers in order to get more investment targeted towards worthwhile companies, tearing off the bandaid all at once might not be the best solution. So far this year, tens of billions of dollars have been defaulted on in the Chinese bond market. Now, because of that, new investors aren't exactly chomping at the bit to get a bit of that exciting new action. Although, if you pitch it right, $1.3 trillion worth of debt is expiring this year, and they're going to need some fresh cash. You, private citizens, gets to pick who lives and who dies. Vote with your cash today. Now, this new idea that corporations could actually fail is leading to a measurable fall in the amount of risk investors are willing to take. In this case, the average duration from borrow to payback of all corporate IOUs is shrinking rapidly. Of course, while all this might be turning off investors in the short term, it could ultimately be a good thing for the market longer term. 
Encouraging competition and allowing investors to more accurately price risk both helps improve the efficiency of the country's debt markets and the people's confidence in those markets. Although, whew, boy, that's short term. A bunch of investors right now are feeling the burn because companies who are perceived to have the government pushing them across the finish line are now pooping out halfway through the race. Now, This large and obtuse debate can be distilled into a more specific debate over whether to let one of China's largest state-owned asset management firms, Huarong Asset Management, die, or instead to drop them a financial lifeline. Now, This company, in an American context, looked like it might be a bit too big to fail, although it's not for lack of trying. Years of bad investments and a CEO so corrupt that the government executed him in 2018 have painted a big red X on the back of the state-owned bank. Now, Just like all the other failing businesses we've talked about in this episode so far, they have $6.2 billion in loans coming to maturity in the next 6 months, and few options to pay for it. Hmm, maybe we sell off a bunch of our holdings. Great, we have all these bonds from state owned companies guaranteed to not fail. Wait, they're all defaulting? Alright, plan B. Hey government, can we interest you in some bonds? Maybe $15.5 billion in bad assets? By the dip. The concerns here are a microcosm of the larger debate on controlling investor behaviors in China. We want people putting money into good companies, not ones that the governor's cousin has a stake in. Bailing out Huarong would reinforce the behavior of investors who ignore risk on the premise that the state will just swoop in and bail out a company, while a default endangers financial stability if a chaotic repricing of the bond market ensues. Pro bailing out Huarong people would argue, you got to keep some money in the Chinese financial system, especially right now, because there are still plenty of good Chinese companies out there who legitimately need some cash. Asset holding companies, under normal circumstances, are key to keeping the cash flowing in corporate debt markets. Furthermore, in bizarre times like this last year of corporate defaults, Huarong's role in absorbing and disposing of lenders' sour debt is worth preserving to support the banking sector cleanup. Now, to put it in terms of Reddit and Wall Street bets, Huarong is the ultimate silver hands right now, just holding on to all these failing corporate bonds to keep some value in the overall market. The state doesn't want a complete collapse, so keep the asset management companies capitalized. I mean, the alternative is a bunch of bonds being dumped on the market in order to pay down their debts, and you really don't want that happening right now. Now, the other side of the argument is saying we have to teach these investors a lesson. If everyone thinks we're just going to keep bankrolling this company every time they make a mistake, then we're putting ourselves at the bottom of a pyramid scheme. We pay the employers and they pay the investors. Now, it's anticipated that bondholders will be required to take a haircut, but it will be relatively small. The goal here is less cost saving measures and more slap on the wrist to say, OK, we might have saved your butt on this investment. But don't be an idiot with your money and drive up the value of worthless companies in the future. Just because a company is state sponsored doesn't mean it's getting our unconditional support anymore. So there you have it. China is rewriting the rules to its financial markets to make it more pro competitive and having the same sort of debates that America did back in 2008. Except this time it's by choice. Now, until we see the effects of their decisions, thank you, and that's all I have to say about that. Hello, YouTube! I'd like to thank my patrons over here for helping me put out my videos. If you want to support independent, nonpartisan news looking into the overlooked, join this growing list of exceptional individuals by clicking on that link in the description. Also, remember to subscribe and ring that bell so that freedom will continue to ring. Give me a thumbs up if you like what you saw, and lastly, as always, thank you for watching.